Hey, my name is Kenneth Braswell, and you have just joined Rough Cuts, um, where we cut to the chase. Um, this is going to be a monthly show that's going to air right here on the AIB network, and we're going to be talking about fatherhood issues. I know. What are they going to be talking about? Don't nobody want to hear about this daddy stuff. Well, on this time, on this show, that's what you're going to be listening to, fatherhood issues, because it's a conversation that we need to have in our community, and it is certainly a conversation that we need to start having in our churches. And so we want to get right into this conversation because Rough Cuts is where we cut to the chase. And on my left, she needs no introduction. This is my beautiful wife, Tracy Braswell. And on my right, one of the most fiercest individuals this country has in terms of a voice with respect to fatherhood issues, Dr. Tori J. Evans Barton. Now, she's going to get me for saying her whole name because yes. to me, she's just Dr. J. But you can call her whatever you call her as long as you spell her name right and as long as you put that DR on the front because she paid for that DR to be on the front. So let's make sure that that happens when you're talking to them. So welcome to Rough Cuts. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. And I would say all my thank yous now. I'll save those towards the end of the show. But I really want to get into this conversation. Um, talk a little bit about yourself and fatherless generation. So, you know, after meeting my father at 31, which most people go, wait a minute, that's, that's extreme. And so after I met him at 31, I realized the importance of fathers. I realized how they were necessary. Even at 31, I needed my daddy. And so I went along this track of trying to discover how can I help fatherless children reconnect with their dads. So we started programs in Boys and Girls Clubs and the first thing the kids would say is, I want my daddy. Mm -hmm. So now what do we need to do? Now we need to figure out how to reconnect them with their fathers, so now we have to come up with a process. And so the Fatherless Generation Foundation, now we reunite fatherless children with their biological fathers while providing resources and programs that support, strengthen, and elevate that conversation around fatherhood mm -hmm. and family values, because we've lost that. Mm -hmm. We've lost the conversation around the family value piece. And so now we reunite children with their dads. We've done 2,553 as of a week ago. And wow. so nice. that number is increasing daily, and that's mm -hmm. what I love about what I do. I get to do it every single day. Mm -hmm. Nice. And Tracy, I connect her with me, and people are beginning to see her more and more. I just drag her in front of the camera, just like <laughs> I did for this particular show. But she has a gift within her um, that I'm trying to help her bring out uh, to begin to elevate her own voice. And so while I could tell you a lot of stories about why I believe she is connected to me as my wife, but connected to me as someone who does this work, I really want her to talk a little bit about her experience with me and working with fathers and why she believes that this is a relevant conversation. So um, I kind of had a uh, interesting upbringing. I didn't know my birth father uh, until I was in college. Um, I had met him a couple of times when I was younger, but really just did not have an opportunity to really get to know him. Um, subsequently, though, I had three different fathers, so I feel like I was blessed in that regard. They weren't, all of them were not the best, but I did get a really great one in the end. Um, and so it kind of shaped me and allowed me to become attracted to my husband uh, because of the qualities that I saw in him and not wanting the qualities that I had seen in some of the other men. Um, one of the things that always stands out for me is when Kenny and I were kind of on the cusp of dating when he was stalking me. <laughs> One of these yes. days I'll tell that story. I got photos, y'all. I got photos. I got photos. See, I have to put that out there first before he tries it. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I loved about him was I remember when he um, talked to, to me about God giving him this vision of um, starting um, uh, Fathers Incorporated. And I remember um, how passionate he was about it and um, just knowing a little bit about what he had kind of gone through, that really spoke volumes to me. And so when he told me that God had given him a vision, um, ironically enough, he said to me, he said, what do you think I should do? And I said, if God gave you the vision, you better run with it. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. ask me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but I was just floored um, by the fact that, you know, he had this vision that he was so passionate about that, what did it take you, like a week to get everything up and about running? Bylaws. Board of Directors, mm -hmm. yeah, and he was just moving at full steam ahead. 
And so that that's one of the qualities about him that I was like, yeah, I, I like this. I can follow that vision. Mm. You know, one of the things that I want to get across in Rough Cuts as we move throughout the history of what I believe is going to be groundbreaking and community changing for us um, is this whole notion of where our faith plays into the work that we're doing. Yes. And so because I think that a lot of people, when they see what I'm doing, they think it's a profession. They think that I went to some... Here. Mm -hmm. college and I got a mm -hmm. degree in mm -hmm. fatherhood and I got mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah, I went to school, but it wasn't that type of school. Right. You know, right. and many of us have gone to that school mm -hmm. and there are a lot of things that have impacted me um, as an individual, not knowing my father until I was 23 years old, um, struggling with my first child, not being in her life and reuniting um, afterwards, uh, finding out about a new one um, two years ago that I didn't know about until two years ago. Um, having a stepdaughter that is my baby, um, and then having two other little ones. And so I think that God uh, designed a school just for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And he created a voice yeah. just for me. But he also gave me the resources and the materials to articulate what I've been living so that I can help heal and talk to other people. I watched you, um, and I know I'm getting away from my questions, uh -oh. <laughs> um, but I watched you um, about a month or so ago on a Facebook Live oh, yeah. um, <laughs> talk to your mom about some things that you guys had never spoken about. Because oftentimes people, when we're talking about this fatherhood conversation, they think that we're so pro-father that we're anti-mother. Yes. And there's nothing further from the truth. Exactly. We love fathers so much because we love moms yeah, and right. because we love children. But talk a little bit about your mom and why she was important, why that conversation was important to you. When you say, make that statement that you just made, so often it's stated or it's felt that if I love my father, I don't love my mother. Right. Mm -hmm. We love our mothers and fathers equally. And I think there are times when you don't have your, your father, you do go to the extreme, but that's kind of trying to make up for lost time. And when I found my father, my mother was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to find him, mm -hmm. but there was this place of being very uncomfortable. And then when I started the organization, it was uncomfortable for her because in telling my story, I was sharing hers. Mm -hmm. So I was very delicate in the moments when I would share it because who wants to have that stuff constantly revealed? But my mother has gone through her own healing, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that has to happen with mothers who have children who are fatherless because eventually they're going to connect. Right. And you have to go through your own process of healing so that when your child circles back, they can get the information from you that they would like. Mm -hmm. My mother exposed her inner, mm -hmm. yes, deepest, darkest secrets yes, in did. that Facebook Live wow. that is now on YouTube. Wow. It was my single mom sharing her journey as to how she became a single mom, how growing up in an abusive household, that caused that thing. And even afterwards, I told mm -hmm. you, you would think that my mother grew up in a single parent household because she solely talked about the abuse from her mother. Mm -hmm. My grandparents were married until my grandfather died. Wow. But mm -hmm. that intensity from her mother right. shaped who she was and mm -hmm. all of that trauma, mm -hmm. it didn't matter what my grandfather really put in for some reason. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was overpowering and overbearing, mm -hmm. but it made my mother choose men that she knew wasn't right for her, mm -hmm. but it was out of a necessity yeah. mm -hmm. to be loved, as she put it. Mm -hmm. She even talked about how she struggled in her faith. Although we've been in church since I was 12 years mm -hmm. old, mm -hmm. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior at 12 and have been dedicated. Mm -hmm. Watch my mother usher, serve, all of that. Mm -hmm. But she said on that video, she said, if my mother never told me she loved me, how can God love me? Wow. Mm -hmm. You remember you and I yeah, were like, yeah, ooh. Yeah, because so be many fatherless children feel that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And the scripture clearly says in Luke 1 and 17, God is going to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children. And right. I had to study that and, and ask questions because looking at my mother, in the things she said, and I've always wanted to know, like, so fathers' hearts were turned off to their children? Mm -hmm. And God said, no, they had to turn it down. When you talk to men who can't see their children, they have to dial that back, because mm -hmm. otherwise, uh -huh. Uh -huh. they live with PTSD, depression, yeah, and yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 and you know, it's, you know, this conversation, you know, I'm so glad that we are on AIB. Um, because we do get to connect this conversation with our faith. Yeah. And I think that our faith-based institutions probably have the best vantage point Absolutely. to deal with the most intimate issues that arrive from fatherlessness, 
having issues with their parents, especially around this area of healing and pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, but before we go into our break, I want Tracy to talk a little bit about, because we talk about this all the time, because her and I both run both the men and women's ministries in our church, Discovery Life Church, y'all, just in discovery. case y'all looking for a church. Huh? <laughs> I always say discovery, right? <laughs> That's because I want you to discovery. No, discovery. <laughs> <laughs> discover Life Church, Pastor Roy and Crystal Barrett, and... Um, they talk and they feed, and my wife and I have had some great spiritual feeders um, that have raised us in a way that have allowed me to articulate this conversation um, so that I can walk into a church building and really mm -hmm. have this conversation in a way that strikes your soul um, because it's part of my calling to do so um, in speaking to the hearts of men. But my wife and I are always kind of talking about how do we take this conversation of fatherhood and make sure that we can take um, biblical application yes. right, and mm -hmm. make earthly yes. sense out of it so that people can heal from it. And your thoughts about that? Yeah, so... Um in terms of uh, just the word father, just knowing that uh, biblically it's a foundation. Um, God the Father in the beginning creating everything um, before he even creates man. And so when I think about that passage of scripture, I believe that God is literally giving us the foundation and showing us how family should operate mm -hmm. as well as how uh, the man's role as the head of the household should operate. And so, you know, just off the top, three things God provided. That's what fathers are supposed to do. You're supposed to provide for your family and not just, um, you know, monetarily, but emotionally, yes. right? Um, there's so many things that men need to provide for their family. And so when we look at God just creating everything before Adam was even, uh, was even created, um, that shows that the importance of just being there as a, you know, pr to provide for the family. And then um, he gave them purpose. And so as he sets Adam in the garden and he says, you know, um, you're to do this, 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 and this. He's giving him purpose and he's basically empowering him, which is what fathers do. They are there to empower their children. Um, and then uh, he gives them a promise of blessings. And so he says, be fruitful, multiply. In other words, he's saying to them, I want you to be prosperous. And so as dads, we're, you know, uh, dads are to put the, their children in position of um, being able to be prosperous all throughout their lives by equipping them with whatever tools that are necessary. So um, this is a really critical part, I believe, uh, that we need to have in the church because we've kind of strayed away from that. Um, we've strayed away from it because of, you know, um, things that have happened historically in the family um, that have kind of put men somewhat on the back burner that um, say that men aren't as important. Um, and so we need to be having this conversation in churches and faith-based institutions to remind them that the father is one of the foundational pieces of the family. And the family doesn't really work as we can see historically, without dad. It just, it doesn't work, it's not the same. And that's not to say that single moms aren't great, but it's to say that when you have a critical component that's missing, you aren't giving the family the best of what you have. Yeah, can you have a good family without dad? Absolutely, but wouldn't it be so much better if we made sure that we include dad since he was a foundational piece in it anyway? Absolutely. Um, you're listening and watching um, Rough Cuts, where we cut to the chase. Um, I'm your host, Kenneth Braswell, um, and these are my guests today, um, Tracy Braswell and Dr. Tori J. We're going to stop right there. <laughs> and after we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little more about this whole issue of healing and pain. But you're going to want to know how you can get involved with us, and we're going to tell you just how to do that when we come back. You don't have to be a superhero to be a super dad. Every dad has a daddy power. Join the movement. Drive to five. 
a campaign to equip dads for maximum performance in the zero through five years. What's your dad's name? Douglas Applewhite. How many times did you see him? Three. I think I've seen my dad in his entire lifetime. Three, maybe four times, maybe five. That I can recollect, that I can actually remember the experience of seeing him. Three times. If I've seen him any more than that, I don't remember. Do you believe that you're in your heart, mind and soul, that you've forgiven him for not being in your life in the proper way? Absolutely not. I have not given forgiven him. Oh, why? Why have you not let him off the hook? I'm not letting him off. I have not let him off the hook because it's more personal and more important for me to sacrifice myself for my son than it is to heal myself. I don't believe that, you know, I believe that, you know, this is the intensity in which the way I work is because the hatred of me losing my father drives me. Welcome back to Rough Cuts, where we cut to the chase. I'm your host, Kenneth Braswell. My guest today, Tracy Braswell and Dr. Tori J. Um, with the Fatherless Generation Foundation. Tracy is with me with Fathers Incorporated, and her and I and a couple of other people in our office kind of run the day-to-day -day operations of Fathers Incorporated. You can find more about us on our website at www.fathersincorporated.com. But we want to come back and want to talk a little bit very quickly about this issue of healing and pain, but we're gonna talk about it in a way that tells you about two events that we're having. And so there are two events in two separate places, but they're one total event because we have one mission, and that is to heal our community through making sure that we heal the pain that we are going through as a result of our fatherless condition. But on June 16th, at Greenbrier Mall. Yeah. Uh, we are having our second annual Fatherhood Expo and we got so much going on and let's tell them about that. Yeah, so um, this year we've expanded. We um, went from one stage to now having two stages. One stage will be um, the family fun focus stage and then the other one will be fathers, all things fathers uh, focus stage. Um, we're going to, this year, have panel discussions. Um, we will have um, lots of entertainment, singing and dancing for the children, arts and crafts. Um, we will have um, resources, really important. We're going to have resources for fathers. Dr. Tori is going to tell us a little bit about the resources she's bringing to the table. Um, but we're going to have vendors there, vendors that will have information um, for dads that um, may need some assistance, whether it's housing, whether it's employment, whether it's getting your resume done, um, health. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to have vendors there that will help men uh, with health issues that they're dealing with. Um, and we're also going to have vendors there that will have job opportunities. So it's going to be really chock full of stuff all day long. We're going to start at um, 11 a.m. with a special guest, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be our Man Up Live session um, hosted by none other than Katie Bow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will proceed from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. with the expo component of it, which will be um, just loads and loads of fun and just chock full of good information and resources. Mm -hmm. And I think people should understand that even though um, it is a fatherhood expo that this is a family event. Absolutely. Um, that we built it in a way to have a father focus, but we wanted the father to be focused on in the context of family. But the other event that's taking place right before ours, but rolling and connecting yes. right into <laughs> what we're doing, is the relevant hard conversation, come right? On. Because yes. when you come to us, we're going to be having a lot of fun, fun. and laughing <laughs> and eating popcorn and all kinds of other stuff. But get your Kleenex out when you when come. You Come here. Bed. Come. So I'll we want you to go to her to get healed <laughs> first, and then come to us, and we're gonna we're gonna rub you up and have, and make you all well and good again. Yes. So beyond the fatherless conference, yes. Tell us about that. So 
it's one of those things, you know, you're hearing from God. What do you mm -hmm. want me to do? And this is the new brand. Mm -hmm. beyond, the fa beyond fatherless just simply means I grew up fatherless, but there's much more to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I live beyond that. I don't have to become the statistics. I don't have to be all the negative things that it says that I am. Right. And so we are doing on Thursday night, June 14th, we're kicking it off with the state of the family. Nice. And we've got some heavy hitters, everyone from Dr. Aldewan Tart, who's going to come with the relationship side. We've got attorney Tanya Mitchell Graham, who is family law. She's called, her trademark is Pitbull in a Skirt. Wow. She helped wins primary nice. custody for fathers all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a dad who's been through the situation. We have Dr. Warren Farrell, who is one of the experts in the space of male engagement and fatherhood and those things. And so I'm excited. I'm going to be on that panel. And I'm excited <laughs> about having that conversation because we need to bring the problems to the table and allow the community to put them on the table so that we can heal you. Absolutely. Beyond fatherless is simply we're going to allow you to face your past because mm -hmm. that's what we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heal your wounds mm -hmm. and reconcile your relationships because mm -hmm. our past continues to break up all of those things. We can't have proper relationships. We don't know how to continue to function. And we're sitting in congregations. We're sitting in churches. Mm -hmm. we're, we're broken. No one's talking about it. So that part of us and that piece of us mm -hmm. stays mm -hmm. broken Absolutely. and it continues to allow the enemy to wreak havoc in our mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. and no one's talking about it. And so it's time to bring this whole conversation of, I was broken. Mm -hmm. I grew up without my dad. And it caused me some pain. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to walk around anymore and act like I'm good wow. right, when I'm right, not right, good. Right. And I don't have to go to church with this mask on mm -hmm. that I'm good. Right. You know, and this, um, you saw the clip during the break, um, the Spit and Anger um, yes. mm -hmm. promo. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we will be that. screening Spit and Anger yeah, yeah, on yeah. Friday. And so uh, please come out um, and see that. I'll be hosting that and we'll be having a discussion mm -hmm. afterwards. You know, but you touched on something and we have a little bit of time and I want to kind of very quickly deal with this because I want those out there who are um, heading up churches and faith-based institutions to kind of under, to know that we understand something. Yes. And that understanding something is we know that the vast majority of congregations today are female heavy. And we know that there are pastors and folks in leadership positions out there who are concerned about having too much of a father conversation mm -hmm. in the wake of alienating that women con congregation that they have. Yes. And so we just want you to know that we know that. But we also want you to know that that's no substitute for dealing with the pain of the reason that men are in church in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to give it to you. We did a study um, with um, Columbia University about four years ago on clinical depression. And we did a survey at Abyssinian Baptist Church, St. Paul's Baptist Church, and um, Allen, Fifth Allen um, Cathedral in New York, three of the biggest churches in the city of New York. And we went in to survey them to find out what the clinical depression looked like in those churches. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that on average, black women are diagnosed clinically depressed more often than, far, than men, with the exception, hold, hold on to your shirts now, mm -hmm. with the exception of in church. In churches, men are more likely to be clinically depressed than women. Why is that so? That is because women are more likely to seek out assistance for their pain before it gets to a level of crippling them. Mm -hmm. Men are not going to come until it's broken and don't work no mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. right? And so when men come into the church, they are probably already up against the wall, their backs are up against the wall, and they are at critical. And right. And so when you're not addressing them in the congregation, you are doing more harm to them yes. and the women in your congregation when you're not addressing the elephant in the room. And right. that is this issue around how do we come together and repair our family? And, and you said a lot there. But why don't men come for help until the last minute? Mm. It's because they typically can't find it mm. when they do approach you. It might be a gentle nudge, mm -hmm. it might be a conversation, but we ignore them because they're our superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, you guys aren't the ones who need help, right? right. And so when you don't need help, we kind of go, well, there, that's a guy, that's mm -hmm. a man, that's mm -hmm. a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you go looking for it, you don't find it. Mm -hmm. You guys are typically the last ones to be saved. When mm -hmm. the Titanic goes down, who <laughs> go, gets to go first? Women and children. Right. Mm -hmm. The men get to stay back. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what you guys, you guys know that. 
Yeah. You grow up with that. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to healing families, we have to have a full conversation of fathers included in the family. And then on Father's Day, mm. I need for these pastors <laughs> who are watching this show right. to not continue to have a conversation around responsibility right. and to man up. Right. Because it's hard to man up when you can't see your child, mm -hmm. and it's not your, and it's not, it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not abusive. You're not all of these things that people paint you as. Mm -hmm. You're a man who has fought and lost, mm -hmm. right. and you've lost everything. Right, mm -hmm. right. But then you go to church on the day where you're supposed to be celebrated, because moms were celebrated, Ooh, yes. and you are torn down. Yes. And you are said, mm -hmm. "Oh, you need to be responsible, and you need to be," and that's at. I'm sorry, that's not just black churches. Right. Yeah. I've heard this across the board mm -hmm. at every type of church you can think of on Father's Day. We give men a talk versus celebration. And so we're going to end on that one because that's a whole nother show. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> and, um, stuff right there. and uh, we're coming back and we're going to continue to have this conversation um, and, and pick this thing apart. Yeah. Because there's a lot of elements and everything that we both talked about or that we all talked about, and I want to come back and really peel those pieces apart because we don't want to um, give suggestion on what to do um, when we don't also come with solutions on. on how to make it happen, and that's what we want to be. Uh, right. We all and are that's who we are. God-fearing individuals sitting around this table um, who go to churches, who love our God, mm -hmm. who love our children, who love our spouses. Um, this is not about pro this or anti this. This is about how do we solidify and bring the uh, fullness of what God has intended for our families back to the forefront, and how can we move forward with that? So, thank you. Look at my guest. <laughs> Look at my guest. I know y'all probably saying, like, you know, he got, he's talking about fatherhood. He got two women on the show first. He ain't got no dudes. <laughs> it's like, listen, we got like, uh, we're going to be here for a long time. The dudes are You're going to see coming. a lot yes. of people flow through rough cuts, and every time we flow through, we're going to cut to the chase. Thank you. Um, give them the last particulars on the conference. Who can they call for more information? So they can call Fathers Incorporated Office. Our phone number is 770-804-9800. Again, that number is 770-804-9800. Or you can go to www.atl. FatherhoodExpo.com. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And the particulars on the Beyond the Fatherless Conference? For more information, you can go to BeyondFatherless.com and the number is 1888-407-7990. Wow. Okay. And don't forget to make sure you come out to the expo because Dr. Tori is going to be there. <laughs> At our expo. Yes. Yeah. Once again, thank you for um, watching Rough Cuts where we cut to the chase. This is how I'm going to leave you every month. Always be kind to others as you're kind to yourself or you'll find yourself by yourself. Come on. Always shoot high for your goals because even if you miss, you'll be amongst the stars. And as my good friend Art Mitchell always used to say to me, it's nice to be important, but it's much more important to be nice. God bless. See you next month. <laughs>